This video builds on our year one work on externalities by looking at marginal costs and benefits and then also giving a bit more detail on the diagrams to show positive and negative externalities in production and consumption. Now for us to really understand the nature of externalities, we first need to be clear on what we mean by these marginal social and marginal private costs and benefits. So just going through these different types of costs and benefits, when we talk about a marginal cost or benefit, we're talking about the impact of adding one additional unit to that current situation. So the marginal private cost is the cost to the individual, and by that generally going to mean an individual firm, a business that is actually producing the output. So the cost to the individual firm of producing an additional unit of output would be the marginal private cost. The marginal private benefit would be the benefit to the individual, generally that'd be a consumer, from consuming an additional unit of a good. But then we have the social side of things as well. So when we look at the marginal social costs, we're talking about the whole cost to wider society of producing an additional unit of a good. So that will include all of those marginal private costs, but it will also include the externality the external costs, those costs that are impacted on third parties. And you add those together to get the full marginal social costs. We've also got here the marginal social benefit, which is the benefit to society from consuming an additional unit of a good. So the same concept applies there. That will include the marginal private benefits, but it will also include those external benefits, that externality effects, those third parties that are impacted added together to make the marginal social benefit. So how does that relate to our supply and demand diagram? Well, the key thing is that the supply curve is actually going to be the marginal private cost. Because if you think about a firm determining the quantity of a product to supply, they will base this on the additional cost to them of producing that good when they decide on whether or not to produce that additional unit. And when a consumer is determining how much of a good they're going to demand, they're going to be considering the additional benefit that that marginal unit would provide to them as an individual. So that, that makes the supply curve the marginal private cost and the demand curve the marginal private benefit. Now, if there are no externalities, and so there's no market failure going on here, there are no external costs or benefits, those private costs and private benefits are going to be the same as the social costs and social benefits. So that's why here I've labeled the supply curve MPC equals MSC, because if there are no externalities, they will be the same. And if there are no externalities here, the marginal private benefit will be equal to the marginal social benefit. And in that case, the market equilibrium where supply is equal to demand will provide an efficient allocation of resources because an efficient allocation of resources will be gained where the marginal social cost production is equal to the marginal social benefit of consumption. Now the problem comes and the market failure would occur when there are these externalities, these external costs or benefits that are imposed on third parties outside the usual workings of the mar market mechanism. And in that case, that will cause a divergence of social costs from private costs or a divergence of social benefits from private benefits. And those are the cases of the different externalities and the different market failures that occur that we're going to look at now. So we're first of all going to take the case of a negative production externality. So we start off, as we've just seen from that diagram, with the supply curve, which is equal to the marginal private cost, and the demand curve, which is equal to the marginal private benefit. And the market equilibrium will occur at this point here, where supply, the marginal private cost, is equal to demand, the marginal private benefit. So that's the free market outcome. That would be the outcome if we just left things to the market. Problems coming here because we've got this negative production externality. So that could be a case of maybe third party costs caused by pollution and toxic fumes being emitted by firms as they produce their output. Now that causes this external cost, which means that the marginal social cost here will diverge from the marginal private cost because the marginal social cost 
is greater than the marginal private cost because of these external costs, that means that this uh, marginal social cost curve will then be further to the left of the supply curve, the marginal private cost curve. So no longer are we seeing supply equals marginal private cost equals marginal social cost. The externality here is happening in production. So we've still got demand with the marginal private benefit equal to the marginal social benefit because we're assuming there are no externalities happening in consumption. And that means that the socially optimal output, the output where allocative efficiency would be achieved by the market, we said previously is going to be where the social cost, the marginal social cost is equal to the marginal social benefit. So that is going to be at this level of output here, Q star and price um, P star. Whereas the market leaves us at this output, price P and output Q. And so the market failure there is happening because the free market equilibrium results in overproduction. Too much is being produced because of these toxic fumes and these third party impacts that are not being considered by the firm that is doing that production. They're only considering their private costs, so they're producing based on this supply curve. When you could say, actually, they really should be, if they are considering all of these costs, they really should be producing based on this supply curve, the marginal social cost curve, which would leave them with a lower quantity of output. And so the market equilibrium is overproducing, it's allocatively inefficient, and it leads to a welfare loss, which we could show on the diagram as this triangle here. Moving on now to negative externalities which might happen in consumption. So that could be the impact on third parties of individuals smoking too much, drinking too much, and the effects that has on communities and on crime and third parties for that reason. Um, and with this case, because this is happening in consumption, it's actually the demand curve where the divergence happens. So individuals only consider the private benefits but the social benefits are actually lower because of the negative externality effects. So you can see that the demand curve here, where it meets the supply curve, is where the market equilibrium is going to be. But the social benefit curve, the marginal social benefit, is actually further to the left because of those negative impacts on third parties. The full social benefit of people drinking or smoking is actually lower than the private benefit. And so we have this consumption externality causing that divergence of the marginal social benefit curve from the marginal private benefit curve. And this time the socially optimal output would be at this point here, again, where marginal social cost is equal to marginal social benefit, output Q star, price P star. But the market equilibrium is leading us to a higher level of output than that up here. And so we've actually got overconsumption of these things. People are consuming too much alcohol and they're smoking too much. And that's having harmful impacts on these third parties. So actually we would prefer it. A more allocatively efficient outcome would be here. But actually the market produces here. So we have allocative inefficiency. And then again, that leads to a welfare loss, which can be shown by this triangle here. So now we move on to the positive externalities and starting with positive externalities in consumption. And so that could be the case of, for example, vaccinations, getting your flu jab each year, doesn't just mean you benefit, so the private benefit, but it also means there are external benefits to those who you won't pass the virus on to. So that means that the marginal social benefit is going to again diverge from the marginal private benefit, but this time it's going to be higher than the marginal private benefit. So as with the case of drinking and smoking too much, the marginal social benefit was lower. With the case of vaccinations, these external benefits are causing the marginal social benefit to actually be higher. And so this curve then goes further to the right. And so we have our initial market equilibrium, as usual, where marginal private benefit equals marginal social benefit. But the socially optimal output, again, is going to be where the marginal social cost is equal to the marginal social benefit, which this time is up here. Output Q star, price P star. And that means that there's actually going to be under consumption in this case. So it's actually quite a common question that why is there a market failure here if it's positive? 
positive, surely it's a good thing. But actually, it's still the market leading to a misallocation of resources. And this time, the market would lead us with too, fl too few flu jabs being consumed. And we would actually want more of those flu jabs being consumed. So we would want a higher level of consumption. So even though it's positive, it's still leading to market failure. This market equilibrium will still be allocatively inefficient. And this time we have the welfare loss, which is shown by this triangle up here. And so finally, if you're still keeping track with all these marginal costs and benefits, we come to positive externalities in production. So these are probably actually the most unusual type because there's not too many production activities that are going to have a positive impact on third parties. One example might be beekeeping to make honey. That's positive impacts on the environment as a side effect of actually making the output of producing honey. And because of these third party effects, the social cost is actually going to be lower than the private cost. So again, we've got this divergence, but compared to the negative externalities where the social cost was higher than the private cost, this time the social cost is lower than the private cost. So that means the marginal so social cost curve comes here further to the right compared to the supply curve, the marginal private cost curve. And so you've got the market equilibrium, which is occurring at this point here, but the socially optimal output is going to be here further to the right where the marginal social cost again is equal to the marginal social benefit and so the market failure here is happening because we've got under production not enough of these um, of this output which is causing positive effects is being produced again we've got allocative inefficiency at the market equilibrium and again we've got a welfare loss which this time is shown by this triangle here